There's a little sound. Uh... Yes. <clears throat> and you are live. I won't be able to read anything if I. So we are live now. Okay. Great. Um, so welcome everybody to TWR Facebook Live. And uh, before we start, I wanted to introduce Anya, who is uh, organizing behind the scene all all these activities. A lot, lot of work. So I know, like, she needs to leave any minute. So first of all, Anya, thank you so much for uh, for helping to make this TWR Facebook Live good as it is with all, all of your team help. Thank you. Thank so you I let you go. Um, and of course, I would like to um, very warm welcome Dr. Amit Goswami. Um, so honor and happy uh, that you are with us here. And uh, I've been uh, interested in your work for a long time and also even though I don't know much about the quantum physics. Uh, so it's just, for me, it's a great learning and to, to know your work. And so I'm very, very happy to, that you're here. And um, just to say that, you know, I feel that uh, the, some sense that spirituality and science uh, definitely need to, to come uh, closer, uh, complement each other. And uh, because there's a lot of people who are either one or to extreme, um, but not necessarily kind of looking from uh, co complementing each other from very extreme view. And uh, I think the uh, more we can bring them together, uh, more I think it will serve humanity. So I think uh, I would like very much uh, uh, to learn more that from you today. And maybe, maybe if you don't mind, maybe if you please uh, say a few words about yourself and introduce some of the work, um, your work. And one thing I would like to ask you, uh, maybe, maybe we can just start like this, is that what is that um, a quantum a physics a theories uh, knowledge that you have learned and um, practices all these years that what you have learned if you narrow down into three specific things and uh, how these three specific things has impacted your personal life that has changed and you think that this will also help same way with all the humanity and everybody else. Thank you so much. First of all, Vimposha, to be here with you. Um, yes, it's a very good question. Um, Actually, you know, I really don't have much to say about myself, except that I have been very fortunate to be able to um, bridge the gap between science and spirituality. And um, the greatest pleasure of my life is to bring an integrated, integrated worldview, which would um, establish once more uh, respect for our spiritual traditions, respect for the huge wisdom that humankind has collected, except that they have not been scientifically validated until now. But now that they have been scientifically validated, let's all try to change the worldviews, the competing worldviews of religion and science and get into a human worldview uh, based on a, an integration of uh, spirituality and science. So with that, let me uh, answer your question. I have uh, been privileged, as I said, to discover some of the basic principles of how to understand quantum physics. The first principle that comes out of quantum physics is that uh, there is signalless communication. There is a domain of reality in which signalless communication is possible, which means communication is instantaneous. Now, uh, immediately speaking, this seems like, oh, that's okay, we know about telepathy, indeed, uh, communication is instantaneous, but this is something much deeper. 
um, it is saying that there is uh, another domain of reality and that must be outside of space and time because space and time, every communication is via signals taking a certain time. We call them local signals because they have to go through the locality before reaching a distant place. Now, we are talking about signal-less communication, which means instantaneous connection between everything. And there is only one way connection can be instantaneous between things, which is that they are one thing. There is just one, we should not call it really thing, but there is no other English word. There is just oneness, nothing else. And this is, of course, the fundamental of all spiritual teaching that we originate, our source is oneness. So science truly has rediscovered this. I mean, this um, non-locality, as we call it, signalless communication, is validated by myriads of experiments. There's so many. Any, any undergraduate can go to the laboratory and verify this. So there is just no doubt in any reasonable mind that there is this oneness. That is the source of everything. In quantum physics, this oneness is regarded as a potentiality. It's the domain of waves of possibility, which is where from every experience comes. So this concept uh, was the basis of my uh, announcement, the basic proposition of understanding quantum physics, which is that consciousness is the ground of all being because if I use quantum measurement theory, which I did, then one gets the unmistakable conclusion, verifiable conclusion, that this non-local domain, non-locality is what we call consciousness. This oneness is consciousness. Yeah. And of course, you call it mind, which is fine. Mind with a big M, that's the Buddhist tradition. Um, we have to respectful, we have to be respectful of each other's words. But at the same time, clearly understand that what uh, in Buddhism is called mind with a big M is what in modern science we call consciousness. From which conscious awareness, the subject object split awareness that we experience originates. Mm -hmm. so, so this is what you call um, quantum consciousness, right? This is what I call quantum consciousness. I used to, initially I was very excited and of course, uh, you know, um, uh, the idea of uh, bridging science and spirituality was very important to me because I myself was a very unhappy physicist and I thought um, I need to be happy and I can be happy. So I started working with quantum physics and working with spirituality practically at the same time. Mm -hmm. I was a materialist before that. Yeah. So in some sense, like in, a, in, in some of the Tibetan tantric tradition, uh, they, we call, we talk about like a three different kind of awareness. One, one is called um, the pervasive, um, the innate awareness or consciousness. And then one is called, second one is called the uh, primordial uh, consciousness or primordial awareness. And then the one is called conscious uh, conscious primordial awareness or consciousness so basically one which i think what you call non local um, um which is um like pervaded everywhere between the matter and the mind and and everything and everywhere but then there is also the aspect of what we call conscious innate awareness so something that a little bit more sense of local that some awareness is within me there is one awareness is within you and my awareness is not necessarily I'm always aware of it unless I was introduced by um, the circumstances or the teachers or knowledge, or whatever. If somebody introduces me to that knowledge and I, I've been introduced and I have somehow direct experiences of it, then only I have what so-called conscious awareness. So I don't, I don't think you in in quantum physics, in your principle, doesn't seem exactly you separate these things, right? We do, we do indeed. So we say, for example, that when this pervading consciousness 
the potentiality of oneness when we make a quantum measurement or whenever an observer observes. Observer can be an ordinary person or an experimentalist, doesn't matter. Anyone who is having an experience is having an experience of subject-object split awareness, which is not that pervading consciousness in which there is only oneness, there is no split. So we also have this concept and indeed, when a teacher comes or when life circumstances, like in the case of me suffering, lead us to inquire, then we um, do practices. We also uh, increase our knowledge. I did both. And um, through that, we discover then the oneness. And so indeed, all the three separate things that you talked about, we have to. You have to have, otherwise there is no integration. So maybe, uh, maybe, um, maybe one another question for you will be, you know, like a, so some sense of uh, the ancient tradition, the spiritual tradition, like in, in Buddhism, Tibetan tradition, in Hindu traditions, this idea of the pervasive consciousness, knowledge already existing for thousands of years, unbroken lineages and transmissions and experiment, meditation, all things are there already now. So when quantum physics is saying, it's kind of claiming to discover, what do you think about this idea of rediscover or newly discovered something which somehow seems like always there? Well, um, it's a rediscovery. I always make sure that I say rediscover because obviously I, I consider the great masters of our great traditions all as scientists of consciousness. I do not uh, consider them as religionists because they were not. They were uh, investigators and they were seers the same way today um, scientists are seers because we have intuition and creative experiences. We touch that oneness and from where our discoveries come. So indeed there is a convergence in terms of our methodology and the methodology of the great masters or, or, or you um, who has been doing this right now. It is an ancient tradition, but as you said, it has continuous lineage. So we do the same thing is what I'm saying, uh, except of course we apply it and then experimentally verify it. That's the only difference. You um, const uh, construct experiences and define and more refined experiences to make your deeper and deeper understanding. We take it to the experimental arena, first verify that yes, indeed, the idea that came is correct. And then we practice and refine and then try to change and transform. And then our paths are completely the same path. In fact, so, you know, I have... for example, like, um, let's say this way, um, how many like a quantum physic physicists, um, so who have some sense of kind of a theoretical understanding, so okay, the quantum um, um, consciousness, and also Dr. Chopra talking about quantum healing, and uh, so these these principles. Uh, not like it's measuring with outer, outer, um, um, through outer technology or circumstances, but more like inner intelligence, like um, trying to uh, experience direct experiences of it. And uh, so, how many? I mean, I don't know how many like people. Let's say in the traditionally in like in Hindu or in Buddhism or something that people requiring certain kind of. Uh, um, foundational practices, and then then you have kind of gradually you are introduced to the, this big consciousness, and then you spend the rest of your life meditating and trying to fully realize it. So, so the same principle, like in 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 your opinion, some sense of in the quantum physics, um, how much that people will really kind of understand this theory and able to apply these theories in, in personal experiences 
and also that that really becomes this idea of liberation or at least minimizing the ignorance uh, suffering and and some sense of have some greater social impact greater change for the society uh, do you really think that like this theory this principle can have this impact in individual life and social social um, well-being well um, you know the scientific tradition unfortunately is a very academic tradition you have to uh, understand it in the west the idea of objectivity is very popular among scientists and they feel that whatever we discover if we become subjectively involved with it then we are violating that objectivity principle so people keep away from what they discover and that is an unfortunately huge hindrance because consciousness is not a thing is not an object as um, your book makes it very clear to even the lay reader that um, it really when we give up the idea that consciousness is an object but go directly into that i am an i a subject qualitatively different from an object then only uh, the wisdom begins and and that's the unfortunate part that most scientists are very unwilling to carry out and therefore they still debate whether subjectivity is real or not you won't believe this but the that's the main contention is consciousness a me a completely an object that i can look at or is there really substance in saying that there is consciousness there is really a qualitatively different something that can be called subject that can yes. be called so you, you you talked in your book about this sense of non duality that this is that uh, idea is that you in some sense you have to go beyond the subject and the object to experience this non local quantum consciousness right yes and the difficulty that most people have is that they take consciousness as an object and therefore they never look into the subject aspect of consciousness which is essential in order to discover that there is non duality so then this has to be changed so this is why i have um started and we have been doing this for many years now a movement called quantum activism our motto is not only to understand quantum physics with the help of consciousness which more and more people are realizing but intellectually uh, but we want to take it further we want to apply these principles of quantum physics to our lives to transform to change the transactional way that our society operates which is creating mayhem and chaos we want to change that to a peaceful society to a creative society to a spiritual society and uh, we feel that it is essential to bring this to the forefront of public awareness we can do it with the old spiritual traditions but fixing people are very much dependent on science today perhaps it makes sense to use principles which go by scientific name they are same spiritual principles but we have a scientific name and perhaps a bit easier to understand because we can provide data and that gives people more faith so there is progress in that sense and there is some some additional thing too for example um there is a real real misconception uh, of many people that spirituality is something that if you just know it if you just know about it that's enough you know like you join uh, you become a christian and that's enough because you know about christ and all this and that's not uh quantum physics has no it's a potentiality you have to really realize it in your life you have to actualize it so since science is saying this perhaps people will more and more recognize that spiritual practices are important meditation is important because we need to actualize the oneness it does not it's, it's not just joining a religious sect and you have it you'll go to heaven and it's all done it's not as simple as that we do have to do the practices yeah, so this is something that uh, it's a uh, there's a possible that one individual uh, kind of 
acquiring this knowledge and actually having experience and realization of that consciousness that's kind of a very important part right yeah that is what leads to transformation i cannot really love just because i have discovered unity as a con- concept i have to uh, learn love by bringing that unity actualized in my being which is the same thing as spiritual traditions have been emphasizing from the get go so so like uh, dr chopra talks about the quantum healing in his book so this is also probably similar what you you are also uh, looking the similar way right yeah actually i have uh, gone further than dr chopra a little bit further which is to point out that quantum healing um, can be reached by following the creative process the same process as we use for transformation well, you know which has been being used uh, for a long time since the days of patanjali in india mm-hmm. uh, and patmasambhava in 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 tibet so can you uh, can you maybe say a little bit more like specific things like uh, there so the quantum uh, consciousness uh, role in healing role in minimizing human suffering role in maybe ultimately uh, overcoming duality and uh, ignorance <laughs> yeah. um, so how does that uh, con- uh, quantum consciousness play a role that's one thing the second thing i'm really interested to discuss a little bit more when we if we have time it's uh, there is this notion in a uh, in our tradition in a, like a dzogchen tradition is a tradition of great perfection there is a uh, um many records of that many teachers have achieved body of light a rainbow body is called rainbow body or body of light so basically the whole idea is that um uh, because of their realization of the consciousness pure consciousness or pure awareness and they are able to uh, dissolve their whole material level material body back into pure consciousness so basically from earth water fire air back into the space where, where, from where it has been originated you know all the has materialized our body so like almost like a deconstructing uh, whole your body into light physical body into light that's one thing and all, also there is a whole idea other ideas about that even uh, i mean we have done some research is also that pain like a physical pain or emotional pain um, has so much to do with identity identity linked with the um identities and when the identity is able to dual identity when identity is able to dissolve or let go the pain disappears the sickness disappears healing occurs so uh, somehow uh, you know again that that consciousness plays very important role in dissolving the actual sickness and pain and even the entire body so can you please uh, maybe say a little bit about that okay so let me take step by step that uh, that's the entire discourse so i hope you will you will interrupt me occasionally otherwise it will become a long by <laughs> myself so um okay so uh, the basic human condition we completely agree with this spiritual traditions we have huge amount of pleasure centeredness we have this emotional negative emotional brain circuits um that's a scientific way of putting that we have all this jealousy anger lust and all this stuff that that clouds the sun as you guys put it so and then then we have this me instead of the subject we have objectified my eye not only my eye when we become attached to pleasure we also objectify the others eye just an object of my pleasure so in this way we short change our connections to consciousness short change the connection to unity so how to go back to unity so we have this three great discoveries of quantum physics one is that non locality which i've already mentioned which in spiritual traditions you call as a spaciousness expansion expansion of consciousness beautiful concept and that's the way it is experienced 
we call it non-localistic knowledge communication because that's the way we experiment with it. We show that there is indeed signalless communication between objects. And then the next one, the real change, like quantum healing. Here I am um, associated with that narrow definition of me, identity, as you put it. I have defined my identity with a constricted personality. And that constricted personality has put a lot of wrong meaning in my experiences. And those wrong meanings have produced blocks in the way that I experience energy. And that blocks eventually translate as a physical disease. When we recognize that the mental constructions, the wrongness, the identities, which is producing the disease, we can proceed in a different way. Of course, there are diseases which are physical, purely physical, like I have a cut in my finger. I'm not talking about those diseases. I'm talking about diseases like cancer, heart disease, autoimmune disease. These are most often produced by mental stress. Wrong way of interpreting what is happening in our world. So in those cases, then we can use the creative process, which is, uh, consists of four or five stages discovered over a long period of about 100 years. But uh, now we completely know what spiritual traditions use, what creative people use, and that is now being used for healing as well, which is we prepare, we prepare, we, we get all the knowledges that we have, we go to doctors, we go to alternative medicine practitioners, we get a whole bunch of advices, we do practices, we may even be taking a little medicine to buy us time, and then we relax. That relaxation is much like meditation. There is concentration first, preparation, and then meditation. Just relax. Okay. okay. So maybe this question about, is it possible, the body of light, is it possible from the quantum physics point of view, is it possible to achieve body of light or po possible to dissolve whole physical body into light? I mean, I'm talking about the what happened, what say what happened, I'm not talking about the possibility. If, if, if you can dissolve identity, individual identity, maybe I have one identity, I can completely change my identity. Today's, today's world people do. Man changing into the woman, woman changing into the man and so on. Identity is completely changed, nationality is changed. But internally, like a sense of I, the ego, of course through meditation, whole idea is to totally transcend that and change that into maybe from local to non-local sense of oneness, so one taste. So, but the physical body, is it possible, is it possible to change into a light? Okay, let's go to light. We, are, we are going too, too far ahead of ourselves. So quantum healing occurs from that, if we carry through this concentration and relaxed awareness alternatively. I call it a process of do and be alternatively. Do, be, do, be, do. You know, those lines are very popular in America. So if we do this process, then a sudden insight takes place. And that's what Dr. Chopra discovered as quantum healing. And then, then we have to do fourth stage, which is called manifestation. We have to change our lifestyle. In that lifestyle change is the key because that's where our identity changes. But unfortunately, most people after the healing takes place do not go through this change of identity. They, they go back to their ego. And this is why uh, our unfortunate experience is that the disease comes back. Yes, so time. basically not able to remain in that kind of consciousness and awareness, optimistic view. They, they go back, trap back into their pain, ego, and that identity, right? That's the kind of the problem. Most, most people do that. Most people do that. They are unable to, you know, I, in my own life, I had a um, problem with my heart. Uh, coronary bypass surgery was necessary. Um, six arteries had to be replaced. But I was already into meditative practices, spiritual practices, uh, so I had absolutely no problem in making real lifestyle change. I became a vegetarian, being one of the major ones. And so all this 
helped enormously. Um, but most people, uh, in my estimation, do not go through these changes that they have to make, transformation. Life has to be changed from the transactional habits, what is in it for me, to a more spaciousness of consciousness. That is what we, you and I both call transformation. And most people just um, either not interested or incapable of going through that stage. And this is really unfortunate. So um, quantum leaps, this uh, non-locality, these are the main lessons that we learn from quantum physics. And um, if we go on applying them, then of course we can go on really discover the oneness of the self itself, you know. We discover all these things that Jokchen talks about, that there is only that consciousness, and, and then consciousness is actually empty. And if that is empty, then we go through processes and we discover emptiness is the light and all that stuff. But in the rainbow body, yeah. in my uh, scientific estimation, when people talk about rainbow body, change of the physical body itself, they're talking about a different kind of physical body. Now, even a few years ago, we could not talk about that within physics. Everybody would ridicule people that there is no other physical um, thing. There is only this physical thing that we have where quantum physics applies and all that. So rainbow body is impossible because even quantum physics does not allow it. But now, to our surprise of everybody, we have discovered that actually the visible matter that we are made of, that's only 5% of the universe. 25% of the universe actually is another kind of matter. They call it dark matter. So the whole game has changed. Because of non-locality, consciousness very much can mediate interaction between our matter, visible matter, and the dark matter. So indeed, in the Tibetan tradition, the fifth bardo after why death. Is called, why is called dark matter? I would like to call it light matter. <laughs> because, because ordinary matter and this matter uh, don't interact directly with any local interaction. This matter only has gravity, so it's, it's still part of the universe, mm -hmm. but we cannot see it. We've just postulated because without that postulation, it is impossible to understand why the universe is expanding the way it's expanding. So we have to, it is, it is, it is, it is a must because otherwise our theories fall apart, but we cannot see it. This is why we call it dark matter. Okay. But dark only to local signals. We can, of course, see it non-locally if you are privileged to that level of reality. Can you please uh, maybe define, when you say um, non-local signal, how you say signal-less, sorry, signal-less communication, uh, how you, when you say signal-less communication, first, how you define what signal is? Well, signal is energy. So uh, the way you and I are communicating, we are taking advantage of sound energy, then electromagnetic energy, and then again converting it back to sound and you're hearing it. So these are all local signals, sound and electromagnetic. Is it possible or is it possible the signal less, it's not that there is no signal less, but the signal, what signal is there is unmeasurable for us for now? No because we have exhausted that, that possibility and um, exhausted that possibility in the sense that people suggested that maybe there is faster than light signals, but we, it's ruled out. There is just no way that we could have that. So indeed space time has signals, which is all slower than light and or equal to the speed of light and then signal less the non-local domain, which is the domain of potentiality, which is consciousness. Wonderful. So this is established. So maybe maybe we can continue, before we continue, I would like uh, to make sure that we do a short uh, meditation. So if you please uh, can guide us 
through a short meditation that what you feel from your discovery knowledge will be something beneficial for everybody yes one of the uh, wonderful things that the new quantum orphy was doing is to establish the validation of energies that we feel in the body especially at the chakras and of the most utmost importance of these chakras is the chakra that is located near the heart we call it the heart chakra so now this meditation takes advantage of the heart chakra it's very easy to activate the heart chakra if you will all the listeners please um if you will close your eyes and relax your body the way to relax the body is tense it first as you breathe in so breathe in and tense your body tense your muscles and then with a big sound ah breathe out and relax Ah. And now you are in your body and then pay attention to your heart chakra. Think of happiness, think of love, think of someone that you care for, think of a revered spiritual teacher. All these things help us bring energy to the heart. Why is this part so important? Because head thinks and so non locality is very hard to establish to the head not that it cannot be done because everything is coming from that non locality but it is just hard so instead we do it to the heart so once again concentrate on the heart and start feeling an expansiveness this is the easiest way to feel the heart energy feel the expansion and let the expansion be visualized how to visualize the expansion visualize that golden rays of love is proceeding from your heart chakra into the heart of every being around you just what is immediately around you if you have people around you let this golden rays of love go from your heart directly into their heart directly at once no time delay there is no signal being exchanged we are just doing a visualization of the expansion of consciousness in other words you have expanded your consciousness to your surroundings feel the expansion again before the expansion was around your heart chakra and now the expansion has gone over the whole room that you are in with all the sentient beings in that room connected with you through the heart so you have in other words a very expanded heart chakra your love is engulfing the entire room full of sentient beings feel that expansion feel the happiness of that expansion and now since you got a hang of it expand your consciousness even further beyond what you can see let this golden rays of light love let them go out and proceed to the entire city that you live you know we sometimes wonder what it mean, means to be a citizen what it means is that you live in a community where you have the potentiality to actualize your non local connection with everyone that's what we call a community in quantum physics a community is one in which everyone potentially can meet everyone else and actualize this potential non local connection that we have with everyone else and now you are actually doing it you are doing it with your visualization you are doing it with your imagination so expand your love this golden rays of love to everyone in this city that you inhabit now you have become a citizen of your city one consciousness of the city stay in this expansion for a few minutes or a few seconds you don't have time for a few minutes and be happy 
And now proceed to expand your consciousness even further. Visualize that the golden rays are proceeding from your heart chakra into the heart chakra of everyone in the whole country, which means USA for most of you, and if you are outside of USA, which means you are doing it in your own country. That potentiality of oneness that we actualized for a community through our imagination, we are now actualizing it for the entire country. How is a country to be defined? In quantum physics, we define a nation by this availability of this particular possibility, that in principle, we meet everyone in the country. And when we meet everyone, we acknowledge that you and I are potentially one, and now we can be actually one by interacting together. This possibility is what makes us the folks of the same country. So visualize that and realize that how wonderful it is to be truly live in a country as a community, as a community in which all people can truly ex experience each other's oneness with the other. Enjoy this oneness. Enjoy this actualization of the potentiality of oneness with everyone in your native country. And now please do the same thing for the whole earth. This is a little bit difficult because different countries have different cultures, different standards of living. Some of the countries are very poor. Some of the countries are very violent. And still, they are one with us. Every one of us are potentially one. And so expand your heart to even those areas where people are very different. People are very different from your culture. People are very different from, in terms of negative emotions. Very different from you in terms of their friendliness. Very different from you in terms of their affluence. But even then, see the potentiality that they are one and see that through your imagination, you can actualize your oneness with them and go ahead and do it and feel the wonderful expansion. Feel that expansion and this time, please stay for at least 10 seconds in this state of oneness, in this state of joy in this state of expansion. And then, when you are satisfied, very slowly open your eyes. Thank you. Thank you. This is the moment in the world uh, so divided and so many un uh, uncertainty. Uh, so this is the beautiful meditation where we, everybody, no matter how different we are, we feel, but we are one in that one place. We are one remembering that. Yeah. It's a beautiful meditation. Thank you so much. So. Maybe last, uh, uh, before we uh, conclude, if any uh, uh, quintessential instruction <laughs> that you want a message, a little message that uh, you wanted to give to everybody. Yes, I would love to. Uh, we talked about non-locality and quantum leaps and quantum healing. Um, there is a third principle that is perhaps um, very, very important and the time has come. Uh, we live under the ages of our rational mind. We live in a hierarchical culture. Hierarchical culture meaning that we have this one-upmanship, we have this superiority, we have this, I am better than you, um, I want to dominate you, it simplifies my life, who cares about you, and all this stuff. Um, quantum physics, of course, 
has simple hierarchies of this type, but it also introduces a very wonderful concept of tangled hierarchy. When you and I have a tangled hierarchical relationship, then in a sense we have actualized our oneness to such an extent that there is no boundary between us. Where you end and I begin, and where I end and you begin, becomes blurry. In this state, creativity becomes our fundamental right. In this state, love is automatic and unconditional. So quantum physics's concept of tangled hierarchy, I think, comes closest to what in spiritual traditions are known as very high states of consciousness. Um, so I would love for everyone to be aware of this possibility. I'm not saying that it is easy to do. Non-locality is fairly easy, discontinuity is a little bit harder, and this tangled hierarchy certainly is, is hard. But please develop a respect for tangled hierarchy and not always be simple hierarchical in your relationships. If you just give up the idea of simple hierarchy from your relationships, you will find that your relationship to the world will improve so much, so much. So thank you. And um, the last thing I do, of course, is communication. I am very open to your communication. My uh, website is amitgoswami.org. And if you write, or if you write to the Rinpoche, I'm sure he will also forward it to me. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. And one last thing, my assistants insisted. I have to do a little publicity for uh, right now. I'm giving a uh, video course on the internet under the auspices of um, uh, Glide Wing Corporation, that G-L-I-D-E-W-I-N-G. And it is on how to live the quantum way or quantum enlightenment and um, it is on the, on the internet right now. We will go on until June 11. You can still join it. And I would love to have you pick up actual guidance from quantum worldview to live your spiritual life. Thank you. Thank you, Rinpoche. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this wonderful moment and happy to share. This is a uh, kind of non-local, local, signal-less, signal internet. <laughs> it's a wonderful you to be in Oregon. I'm being here in Berlin, able to just talk like this, sitting. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you.